Welcome back to the channel. Today let's take a look at the Winchester Model 67 bolt action rifle. This 22 caliber rifle was in production from 1934 until 1963. The Winchester Repeating Arms Company based this model on their earlier Model 60 and for many years it was the mainstay of Winchester's single shot rifle lineup. The Model 67 really is a versatile rifle. And it'll fire the 22 short, long, and long rifle cartridges equally well. In order to fire this rifle, you place a single cartridge in the chamber and close the bolt. The cocking knob at the rear of the bolt then must be manually pulled back all the way to the rear until it locks in the cock position. That way, the shooter intentionally knows the rifle is loaded and ready to fire. The rotating wing style safety on the rear reminds me of the one found on the 1903 Springfield. The Model 67 has a 27 inch barrel with a beaded front sight and a U-notch rear sight. Both are dovetailed into the barrel and drift adjustable for windage. The rear sight is also equipped with a slide adjustable sight elevator. The stock is made of plain uncheckered walnut with a composition butt plate. In my opinion, it's about as straightforward as a single shot rifle can be. Even today, the Winchester Model 67 is sought after, not only for its accuracy, but it's also considered to be a very safe beginner's rifle. The Model 67 has certainly earned its place among classic American rifles. Even though they're no longer being manufactured, they're fondly remembered by a lot of folks as their first rifle. And that's exactly the case with this one. This Model 67 actually belongs to my brother-in-law, Steve. It's a pre-war example, minted back in early 1941, and it was his grandfather's rifle, which was passed down to Steve's father and many years later passed down to him. He's now preparing to pass the rifle down once again to his grandson and thought it would be nice to return it to some of its former glory and that's where I come in. When he brought it to me, it was definitely in need of some TLC. Most of the original bullying on the barrel was gone. The bolt internals needed quite a bit of cleaning up, but surprisingly, the bore was in remarkably good condition. The stock had its share of small dings and dents that were going to have to be addressed. Thankfully, walnut is amazingly resilient. Sweating out the minor dents and dings with a damp rag and a detailing iron really didn't take too long. Using outer's rust remover and some fine steel wool took a fair amount of effort, but to prep the surface properly for bluing, it had to be done. A gun bluing product I really like to use on projects like this is Oxfo Blue Cream. It's a professional grade cold bluing available from Brownells. It's really good stuff, and I've always achieved first-rate results using it. To get the very best results, the metal you're applying it to needs to be warmed up slightly by heating it with a heat gun or a hair dryer. You do want it to be warm to the touch, but not hot. You apply the cream evenly to the exposed metal with an applicator or a soft rag. You may have to resort to using a few Q-tips to get it into some of the tighter spots, Basically, all you really have to do is follow the directions to get really good results. To get the bluing to the desired color depth, you might have to repeat the application. I went over this barrel action twice to get the color where it needed to be. After cleaning all the oxalate blue off, I gave it a good wipe down with a mix of baking soda and water to neutralize any further darkening. Oxalate blue is acidic and can cause blushing which is an over darkening effect in spots where it wasn't properly cleaned off. And if that happens, there goes that evenly blued look you were going for. Before reassembling the rifle, I gave all the metal parts a good coat of gun oil. And while I was at it, I gave the stock a good wipe down with mink oil and let everything set overnight. Overall, I think it came out really nice. My brother-in-law Steve seemed pleased with the results and I'm sure his grandson will be proud to own it. Passing down or legacying a firearm for the next generation has always been an American tradition. A tradition that actually goes back even before the founding of our country. The sad part is there are some 
and provident politicians who would like to see American traditions, like legacying a firearm to a family member, become illegal. I don't know about you, but those people don't seem to be the least bit in tune with our American culture, our Constitution, or our Bill of Rights. The next time you see one of their names on a ballot, do the patriotic thing and vote them out of office. In spite of those people, this rifle's legacy continues. And that's exactly the way it should be. Until next time, practice often, shoot straight, and thanks for stopping by.